Welcome to Opalites TV. Today I'm in New Jersey, in the US, together with the two co-founders of Qplum. Qplum is an AI-driven asset management firm. And Mansi Zingal has a deep background in global macro, and Gaurav Chakravarti has an impressive history in high-frequency trading. So, I want to ask you two to explain us more about their background and what they have built with Qplum. So my background is in computer science. I did my bachelor's from IIT Kanpur and then I came to University of Pennsylvania for a PhD. While doing that, we took this amazing course by Dr. Michael Steele and he taught us how the machine learning approach that I was learning can actually be used in finance. And right after that, I quit to join high frequency trading firm. It was just called trading at the time. It was pre financial crisis. And to our research, I started small with just 10,000 and uh, there I made more than 500 million from that. And that was not because of me. That was because the machine learning work, the, the, um, it was really successful in that period. And I was the youngest partner of the firm, but I built a team of around 50 people we were trading globally, it was, it was more technology than uh, anything else. In 2015, Mansi and I started Qplum. And the idea is that bring together systematic global macro, high frequency trading, but all in an AI driven framework that now can service institutions at different asset sizes. Qplum is three years old. We are a team of 30 plus engineers. And as Gaurav mentioned, our mission here is to make investing a science. Uh, we have an online investing service through which we service individuals and families. We also have a customized solution service through which we are servicing institutions like RIAs, family offices, and pension funds. And to add a little bit about myself, I'm a computer science engineer by education. I came to US in 2004 to pursue master's in computer science at University of Pennsylvania. And that's where I met Gaurav, so we go back a long way. The courses we took with Dr. Michael Steele, as Gaurav mentioned, really transformed our thinking about how machine learning methods can be applied to financial time series. After graduating from UPenn, uh, my first job was at Wachovia Bank. I started as a swap options trader, trading gamma, options on swaps. Then I moved on to trading short and swaps at Merrill Lynch and Bank of America. And during the financial crisis, I also released a new product called Options on Overnight Index Swaps while I was at Merrill Lynch. After trading on the sell side for a few years, I traded on the hedge fund side as well. Uh, my last job, I was at Brevin Howard. It's a global macro discretionary firm. I was managing a $100 million book uh, and my mandate was uh, total return while also helping a bigger PM with his billion dollar book on the discretionary macro side. In 2015, Gaurav and I started Qplum with a single mission to make investing a science. And really what we wanted to bring was the value of data driven decision making with the intuition that comes from systematic macro. We wanted to put those two things together to provide investors with a service where this form of investing can be transparent, can be low cost, and also they can see the value addition that comes. Mansi, please tell us more about your products. Sure, we have three product lines. Our most popular product is our flagship portfolio. It's diversified systematic global macro strategy where we bet on dynamic asset allocation. We also have a futures program. Apart from this, we also work with many institutions on multi-asset customized offering. Here, we take their existing allocation, gather information about their existing strategies, and offer them a solution that complements their existing offerings.
what Gaurav and I have learned uh, through our years of trading in this industry is that there are way too many products out there and the burden of identifying and finding a product is on the investor and really what we have found out is there is no one size fits at all type strategy. So what we do here at Qplum is we spend a lot of time understanding clients needs. Uh, most investment managers look at external risks, market conditions. They look at investor objectives. However, the investor behavior remains a very underutilized input in the investment process. And that is what we focus on in our customized solution offering. Uh, we develop a utility function for the client. We look at their current asset allocation, their investment selection process, and we identify first, how would that current investments perform? Would they reach their target? Would they reach their loss aversion function? And based on that information, we offer a complement to their existing strategies. What we have also discovered, and Gaurav can elaborate more when we discuss our investment process, is there is much more alpha in asset allocation versus security selection. The investors don't have to spend the amount of time, money, and resources in finding those best asset managers, in finding those star traders. Instead, we can have a different methodology where the asset managers are working directly with the CIO office and everybody in the industry is aligned on identifying the dynamic asset allocation instead of finding star traders. Oh, I think this is super interesting. I'm curious now, explain to us, how do you use AI in doing that? So the only way to, to offer high quality investment management at low fees is to use a machine learning pipeline that takes into account all the inputs and then customizes for the investor. AI is about you being able to use very different ideas, very different inputs, very different uh, constraints and slowly learn from mistakes. If you talk to institutional investors, their number one pain point or the common theme is they want lower fees and greater transparency. In our AI-driven approach, the strategies we find are through a completely systematic pipeline driving down costs. And they are responsive, so you do not need to hire an army of whiz kids to find new features, new indicators. They learn by themselves. A lot of people generally want to understand with AI is that what's going on? I mean, how do I understand what the machine is doing? Um, I think that one of the benefits with a systematic process and in particular an AI driven process is that you can make it much more transparent than a human discretionary trader. You can run an AI trading system through different market scenarios, through different correlation regimes, through different volatility regimes. You can, you can understand how it will behave. And that is how, you know, we define knowing something. We, we define being in control when we understand how something will behave. Gaurav, what would you say is your edge when it comes to applying artificial intelligence in this investment process? Our approach to using deep learning, which is a, a machine learning algorithm, is that we use market data to learn two aspects. One is we do automated feature extraction. What that means is instead of hiring 50 whiz kids that I did in my, in, at Tower to look at market data and find indicators that work, that make money, now we are doing that through much larger machine learning network that is able to explore a lot more features. It's able to iterate and it's able to 
find which are similar, find correlations, and slowly converge on stable indicators that still are very profitable. The second aspect is to detect the market regime. And the regime indicators help us figure out which of these strategies are more likely to perform in this current market regime. Gaurav and I have been in this field for a very long time. And if you look at a traditional asset manager today, I think it's time that they start thinking like a technology firm instead of a finance firm. Um, AI here is not about finding the next home run, finding the next big trade. AI can be used to reduce costs, to lower key man risks, and to allow for more focus on having a diverse set of strategies. By that, what I'm trying to say here is, uh, if you look at what a new generation asset manager will look like, say five years from now, 10 years from now, it'll look nothing like what we see today. Uh, you close your eyes and you think of what a hedge fund is, and you say, oh, it's a trader, a quant, a research analyst, some Bloomberg screens, Reuters screens, lots of Excel sheets, and what I'm saying is, if you look at Cupa, you see DevOps engineers because we are cloud native, because we need lots of servers to run studies and process 20 years of historical data and seven years of tick by tick data for us. You see quants who work directly with Gaurav and they are not writing the next indicator, but they're actually working on this deep learning framework that extracts indicators for them. We are using AI not to predict whether markets will go up or down tomorrow but we are using AI to summarize what the markets are doing today. Um, like right now, right, right now in this interview, uh, or right now in this discussion, we are processing a lot of complex information, but if somebody looks at this and then goes and talks to a friend, he will not say it word for word. He will summarize it very beautifully in a few lines. And that is where AI becomes very powerful. That is where we are using AI at Cube One. You know, a lot of people ask is, Using AI doesn't mean just spinning up TensorFlow uh, on market data, but I think what makes us different is that Mansi and I have been managing money for 12 years now, and we understand all the uh, risks that come with portfolio management. Mansi uh, and I both uh, been we were very profitable pre-crisis years, during the financial crisis, post-financial crisis, very different regimes. And we know that any system has flaws. We know that risk management comes first. There, there's a lot of knowledge that Mansi and I have gained, our background systematic global, my NHFT, that we are inputting while developing this system. Is socially responsible investing a consideration for you? Absolutely. We see SRI, socially responsible investing, as a huge area of growth. It's a big opportunity for us and for the investors. Of course, it depends on the client's needs. Um, we offer ESG-based uh, strategies as part of our customized solutions offering. Uh, what we are seeing right now is about 2.6 trillion out of 44 trillion equity market right now is uh, invested through SRI funds. And the reason we offer it through our customized solutions offering is because SRI or ESG has to be in context with what the investor needs, with what the client requirements are. Right now, a lot of firms are lumping it into one product and just overlaying it on top of their portfolios. Uh, that wouldn't do the job for the investors because um, socially responsible investing means different things to different people. What I think might be relevant in a socially responsible investing world might be very different from some, what somebody else believes in. And the interesting part here is that it's an underappreciated source of alpha. And where AI comes in is even more interesting because 
it can help reduce the cost of discovering ESG factors, ESG-based strategies. You have to analyze a lot of fundamental data. You have to analyze a lot of technical factors, a lot of third-party data about all these different social factors, corporate governance factors, environmental factors. And that's why we think that offering it through our customized solutions is the most appropriate way to extend it to clients. Can you give us an idea how your investments have performed and also give us an outlook looking into the future, please? Our flagship product has produced a sharp of 1.4 with an annualized return of 11.3% since inception. We continue to believe that dynamic asset allocation is a better source of alpha for the investors rather than security selection. We continue to believe that by being nimble in their asset allocation choices, investors will take more, be able to take more advantage of this changing market regime versus trying to spend time and resources in figuring out who the next best trader is, who the next best star performer is. I'm very optimistic about the future of AI-driven methods. So I did this uh, research recently. If you look at the trajectory of systematic trading, you, you start with trend following. Then you go to Statar. Uh, that was around 1997. 90, In 2007, you segue, uh, we, we, we saw high-frequency trading doing really well. And I think 2017, 18, this is the time for deep learning and AI-driven methods to take over. I think the next 10 years, every fund that cares about delivering alpha will be using deep learning methods. It's the best way to use many different data sources, many different alpha opportunities, and make uh, something that works across market seasons.